Hello, everyone. Today is going to be the fourth episode of the Semitic Roots of Maltese podcast, and today I'm very excited about this one. So what's on the agenda today? As I mentioned in the third episode, there I'm going to be sharing some different ways that Semitic Maltese or traditional Maltese expresses the concept of maybe, perhaps, or possibly. And I'm also going to share an interesting expression, which is seems to be pretty unique to Maltese. I'm not sure where it came from, as well as the uh, the archaic word of the day. And I'm going to be going over a trilateral root, which is very versatile in Maltese, and it's extremely, extremely used. It's a very important trilateral root, probably one of the most important ones if you're a spooky Maltese on the street. It's always used everywhere. So the expression that I found very interesting I found this I found this a little while ago. I believe I found this in the Maltese, the old Maltese Bible that I have. So it literally means a breath of wind. It expresses the meaning of pointless, something that has no value. I don't have the original sentence, but I made I made up an example sentence down here. It means the whole situation is pointless. Ilada kola nefha rih. So nefha means a breath and rih means wind. So generally when you put when you put two Maltese words together, it has this blah blah of something. Sometimes you can use ta, which means of, but sometimes words are made like this. There's also there's a lot of examples of this. I'll go over this in a future podcast episode. So on to the ways to express maybe or perhaps. So unfortunately in everyday Maltese, the most common word for maybe is an Italian root forsi, which I believe is the exact same way uh, that they say in Italian. Maltese has four different ways that I know of right now. There may be more, but this is what I have dug up over the years. Most of these are dated, archaic, rarely used, or just literary. I'll tell you if I've ever seen it before, what they what they mean, but they can all be used as maybe or perhaps. I've also shared the Arabic that it comes from or that it represents as well as an example sentence when I when I have one. The first one, ya'au, it literally comes from a word that means it falls and. That u is said to be from the word for and. It's something like it so happens that. And in my notes, I have possibly from my own studies. So the example sentence I found, shta merob isma ya'au chempiltli dadar. Either what's up, Rob, or what are you doing, Rob? Listen, perhaps he called me at at the house. It, it's from a book, so I, it, it kind of looks to me to be a literary word. I have also seen this in the Maltese Bible as well. I have never seen this used by any Maltese person in contemporary texts or on or in Facebook groups. The second one, Andumanane. This one, I, it's, it's another one of those very uniquely Maltese words or expressions. I have no idea where this came from. It has the literal meaning of he has from where. According to my notes means it could be, which is another way to say maybe. However, in contemporary Maltese text, which I've seen in a, I've seen a couple of different Facebook groups where they speak exclusively in Maltese, it seems like it's used by people over 35. Older folks use it as well. And this is still used, but I fear that it's going to fall out of disuse within the next 20 years. I'm not exactly sure maybe younger people are picking this up i'm not sure but i've never every young person i've ever spoken to in maltese i've never i never heard this they they all say forcey the third one yo i said this in the last episode it has the meaning something like something like and if not is where it literally comes from however this can mean by any chance or perhaps i have never seen this anywhere i've never seen it in a maltese bible i haven't seen it in contemporary text it may be used somewhere. I don't know. I don't even know where the people who retrieved this got it from. It's there. It's a word. I I recorded it. So, and I uh, got the Arabic right here, which it's supposed to mean and if not. And then the last one I've seen this in uh, in an old dictionary. I believe it was in Barbara Giuseppe's or Giuseppe Barbara's dictionary. It literally literally means like nothing. This is another one of those things. I have no idea where this came from. Maltese has a lot of expressions with bahal, uh, dots, like dotshane. It's another word we'll, that I'll go over in the future episode. But there's also a lot of different expressions and conjunctions that use bahal. 
and they and they write them as one word. So an example sentence below is Bahalshin Maush Sabi. This means or maybe it's not pretty, something like that. Sabi is is a, a uniquely Maltese word that means beautiful. I think most Arabic dialects use use this as mornings from Sabah. Maltese doesn't have the same word. They say they say Sabha, which means like dawn when the sun is coming up, but it doesn't mean morning. Maybe in an older form of Maltese it does. And the rare and outdated word for today, meaning flower, this has also been replaced by a word, an Italian word, fiori. The main word used in traditional Maltese text to refer to flower is Zahra or Zahar, or sorry. I'm, I pronounce this H, but it's, <laughs> the H's are never pronounced. It's supposed to be Zara or Zar. It kind of like extends, extends it, but it's supposed to be entirely silent. And an alternative that I've also seen is Naura Naurit, which would have referred to two to ten flowers, and Nawar is an uncountable amount. However, this typically can also mean blossom, so it's a little bit different. There have been, um, if you look up the word for little flower, which would be furet in contemporary Maltese, you can you can find Zaira or Nwaira, and I'll go over this Air. This ayr, I guess it's a circumfix in Maltese in a future episode, which is, it basically serves as a limit for the language. And there is an expression that I wanted to share. It basically means something like, it's all roses. That would be the English way. However, it's something that expresses unclouded happiness. It literally means roses and flowers. Ward meaning roses and zar, obviously, meaning flowers, as we've had here. And the example sentence is, Ilhaya tazwij mish de yem ward uzar. Meaning the married life is not always is not all roses. Meaning that your married life is going all marriages have problems or they all have their ups and downs, basically, something like this. And today's trilateral root. This one is going to be interesting, at least for me it is. This root, E Ed, it has it is a very versatile root. And there's probably only a few verbs that are more versatile than this one. This typically deals with the state of being in place or in some place and it can also it also deals with placing an object or putting some object somewhere so we're going to go through this one there's a second one because there's just there's there's some extended meanings that i have to share and as well as an extremely important and extremely common way to to say this as well it's it's kind of a new grammar concept but i'll have to go through that in a different episode the actual concept of it so the first one e ed means means to place or to put this is a type three verb and then we have to e ed which i've put in light blue highlight basically turns this into a passive verb so this means to be placed or to be put the second one this one is actually shared with arabic so Arabic has this same word. However, I believe in Arabic, it only means a seat. I believe most Arabic dialects, if not the whole language, is using a word like kursi for a chair. At least that's the word I've learned in my classes. This would be pronounced ma'ad or ma'ad. Like I said, it means chair, places sit. It could also mean seat. The third one, this is one of these meanings that has kind of evolved. I believe it came from staying put, odd. This means unemployment, and it is used as unemployment, like in contemporary Maltese, it's the official word, and it also means staying put. The next one, a'ada, or a'adit, in the plural. This means posture, like the way you stand. It can mean the state, like the state of something, and even though the word situazioni is used 100% of the time in older Maltese texts and in traditional Maltese, or when I speak Maltese, the word a'ada can also carry the meaning of situation. And then we have ta'id, or ta'id uh, means joining or fitting things together. And then in the light blue here, to save space on here, ta'id or ta'ida means putting in place. And then we have a pretty common verb, which which can be used. This, this verb can also be used for living somewhere. So you, you could say like, I live in Malta. Not old, uh, not old for Malta. So that means I live in Malta. So this can be used for if it literally means like I stay. And I think some, I think there's a romance language that says something like this. Uh, 
like some places say I stay for I live in a place. Uh, however, I can't name it off the top of my head. Maybe Portuguese, maybe German. I'm not 100% sure on that. And you're old. This means to stay, to pass time in some place. And it could alternatively mean to submit to something or someone. This is a type one verb. This is the second slide. There is a lot of different meanings, as I mentioned before. I want to get into this. These have kind of went in their own direction. However, uh, this word ia, or in the plural, eon, means the bottom. It can mean, it can refer to the floor, and it can also refer to any surface as well. This, I believe, is connected to the concept of stain put. It's put there, it's the state of it, it's there, so it's the floor, it's the bottom. And then we have another one, which I'm not even, I'm not even exactly sure where I got this from. According to my notes, it means a handful. So ia eid. So it would it would be like the surface of a hand. <laughs> That's literally what it what it would mean word for word for word. A handful. So you could say ia eid ia eid uh, ein ein bar. That would mean like a handful of of plums, I believe. That word is some some fruit. And then you have ia il kabir. The great deep, that's how it would translate. And the great deep, I believe, is falling into disuse even in the English language. But this is, I found this in the Bible, the Maltese Bible. And this is this refers to deep oceans or the subterranean world. And then we have ed ida. And you would change this ha to whatever yours is. So if you're playing your hand there, you'd say ed ed, ed edek, your hand, you know, stuff like that. And it means to lay one's hand. So you lay your hand down on something and then this one this last one this one is extremely important in maltese it's used all the time people say it they write it but this this is basically maltese's so maltese doesn't have a word doesn't have a verb to be i mean you have you have ken or yakun but that's more like become that it's a little bit different here so this this would be to be as in to be in a place so for example I am at work. Or Batala. This person, or you could say like Maria Ieda Aun Fu Batala. Maria is on vacation. Or Mary is on vacation. This, if you look at this here, Ied and Ieda, I'm assuming you could call this a D verb. One of the that concept of taking the trilateral route and turning it into an adjective. However, this is a I don't want to I'm not sure if it's called a state of verb where it is essentially a verb for the person. You don't have. You only have to conjugate it for gender. Basically, carries the meaning of a verb, but it refers to the state. So this is something that is shared across the Arabic, the Neo Arabic variety. So we'll go through this in their different episode. In Maltese, it's not that common. With certain verbs like this one, it is common. However, most verbs in Maltese just simply conjugate it now. But this is one of the very few verbs in Maltese that uses this on a common basis. I actually had to track a lot of these these stated verb forms, verbal forms, in the Maltese dictionary because they're just not that common today in contemporary Maltese. Anyway, so thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, send it to your friends, send it to your family if they'll watch it. Thank you for supporting. If you got to this point, big thanks to you. Hope you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next episode.